Hello, everyone. Um, before we, uh, we start, uh, we will do, uh, I want to ask you, this is above, so the yes that you will have to speak. Please, when you have to speak, raise your hand. We will give you a microphone. Look at the camera and then start speaking. Well, now I would like to present to Paul Weiss. He will uh, present us bits from new maintainers and users. So, Paul. Okay. Uh, firstly, I'm a little bit unprepared, so uh, yeah, the, f the full results will be released on Demon Development, announced when they're done. Um, some of the issues that users and new contributors ha brought up have been addressed since the surveys have, were sent out and responses gathered. Um, so, <sighs> what basically I'll be talking about what I did. The user survey results, the new maintainer survey results, uh, whether I'm going to do it in the future, and then we'll open up for discussion. So, basically, I did two freeform surveys one of Debian users and another of Debian new con contributors. The new maintainers, um, application managers, people do doing sponsoring, people having their packages sponsored. The survey was specifically free form, so people could answer however they felt. Uh, but I did mention a list of questions that people might like to respond with answers to. Um, how many of you saw the surveys? A few. <laughs> okay, uh, I specifically asked people if they wanted their comments published and or if they wanted them attributed to them. A lot of them said they prefer them to be anonymous but said that was fine to publish them. Uh, the user survey was advertised on Debian user on forums.debian.net and also on IRC a few times. Uh, the new contributor survey was advertised on Mentors, Newmate and IRC. Both of them were also advertised on Linux Weekly News. Um, had a couple of contributors advertising them on language specific user lists. That was the user one. Okay. So basically what I did is I sent out the surveys and sent out reminders occasionally. Um, I replied to the mails in batches as I came in, clarifying things informing people of in-progress solutions to the issues that they found, countered some misconceptions. Um, the analysis of the results was done during DevCamp and DevConf, which is why I'm a little bit unprepared. Uh, so basically what I did was re-read all the emails, form sections based on the common answers, and filled them with summaries of what people had said about those sections and uh, some statistics as well. So uh, the reason I did the survey was to connect personally with users, connect developers to the wider user community, to gather information about how Debian is used and the variety of locations and things that it's that is done with it. Um, to gather information about how our users contribute to Debian, to gather suggestions and concerns from users, to inform the user base of things happening within the development community, and to encourage, most importantly, to encourage users to become more closely involved in Debian. Um, because of the volume of the results, the user survey results are a fair bit longer. And finally, thanks to Kibi, Micah, and Barry DeFries for helping with the wording of the in initial surveys. Uh, now we'll go on to the results of the user survey. So we had about 216 emails. Some of those were mine, and most of them were from people responding. Had two translators, and overall 98 people responded. So it's not a huge sample size, but that's what you get. So most, most of the people 
were happy with Rus Debian. Two, I mean, some of them didn't mention this or I wasn't able to infer whether they were happy with Debian from their answer. And there were a few hostile users. Okay, so start off with some locations where Debian is used. So we've got Bird Island on uh, near South Georgia in the South Atlantic, near Antarctica, on a research station. Um, another one that was mentioned was Las Tarinas in the Dominican Republic, that's a net cafe. Um, there are a few home users in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Santiago, Chile, Hamilton in Canada. Uh, and then there are some university users in near Madrid in Spain, in Australia and in Estonia. And there's a software company in Italy that's using Debian. And uh, the president of a lug in Cape Town, South Africa, mentioned using Debian. So some of the projects that these users wanted to advertise, tell us about. Uh, firstly, the, the one terabyte disk grade machine that backs up 70 notebooks of, of a company's executives. Uh, the next one's the Antarctic Research Station. That was the one that I found most interesting myself. Uh, you can get a link off me afterwards and read the email. Another one was a, a lug is developing a Debian based robot. Uh, sounds pretty interesting. There's another one, uh, TCOS is a thin client generation system, like um, LTSP and similar things. Another one was, there's a cluster for computer based ecological monitoring at the city of Newcastle in Australia. Um, there's a, another cluster, 5,000 CPU cores, one petabyte worth of storage that is used for the search for gravitational waves, physics research. Um, another one that was the Cuban Debian blog, debiancuba.cu, uh, and the a bio bioinformatics software company wanted to mention the Plone for Bio project. So what kind of users is Debian supporting? So three users mentioned that we're supporting their software development. Two were general scientific research. Two were chemistry research. One was talking about computing research. Another home user was doing genealogy research with Debian. Specifically mentioned the GeneWeb uh, package. The, there was a, the physics cluster. Um, there was a geoinformatics guy. There were two bioinformatics users. One net cafe, two music studios. Three users mentioned using it in an educational setting. There was one journalist, uh, there was one NGO in Brazil, and of the mails that I analysed, there were 17 mentioning using Debian in employment or business. So, uh, some of the examples of install types. Three embedded, 11 laptops, 28 I mean, 11 people mentioned installing on laptops, 28 on desktops, nine workstations, 21 servers, four clusters. These were for ecological monitoring, modeling, the physics research cluster, and computational chemistry cluster, and bioinformatics. There was one classroom mentioned running Debian, one data center, and one house. The house was controlled with Debian. Um, so what architectures do our users mention? Most of them didn't mention any architecture. Five mentioned i3d6, four AMD64, one PowerPC, and one Spark. Um, 
Most people are using etch. A few people specifically mentioned using Sid or Lenny. There's one old Woody server and a couple of Sarge machines. Most users didn't mention Popcorn. Uh, one guy didn't know about it and isn't going to install it. Three didn't have it installed and might install it in the future. A couple of them don't have it installed because they don't like reporting information to external um, organisations. And nine people had it installed. So what do people like about Debian? So app depackage aptitude. A lot of people like the installer, um, especially the net installer. Um, one person mentioned that Deb Ian was romantic. <laughs> they like that it's non-commercial, not corporate. They like the sysadmin tools. They like the community and the support, the IRC lists, forums, documentation. One user specifically mentioned they love man pages. Um, people like the philosophy behind Debian. They like our stability, reliability and the quality. Um, some people like the constantly rolling aspect of testing. People like the Arch support. People like that it's the original project. Um, people like that it's an international project. They like the large variety of software. They like that it's officially supported by HP. They like the Debian logo branding. They like our sane attitudes. <laughs> <laughs> they like our decision making processes. They like our strict policies. They like the security support for stable. They like software redundancy that, that you can get several different programs that do the same thing. They like our long release cycles. They also don't like our long release cycles. <laughs> and they like FAI. Um, okay, so some things that people specifically dislike or issues they identify. So the daylight saving switches apparently seem to cause us trouble. Um, flame wars, some people said it was hard to contribute. Some people said it wasn't easy to find out how to contribute. Some people doesn't like that we have to uh, comply with software patent stuff. Some people said the BTS was frust frustrating for new users. And the, as we heard earlier, that the Debian web page needs a visual refresh. Some people don't like the slow releases. Some people mentioned our arguments with upstreams as something they don't like. Um, another person mentioned that they don't like us removing offensive packages like a uh, hot babe and similar ones. Um, they don't like that bugs take a long time to deal with, to be dealt with. Um, they don't like that because Debian is so large that it's hard to find information about what you're looking for because there is so much of it. Um, they don't like our relative lack of marketing. They don't like that sometimes orphan packages don't get picked up. They don't like irresponsible maintainers going MIA. They don't like over integration, like being able to remove one piece of software from KDE, for example. Um, they don't like the inconsistency in packaging tools like, for example, Python support or and Python central, but two tools doing the same thing. Um, and some don't like that it's hard to config, configure Debian for older machines with less resources. So some wish lists, uh, revive Debian, DB, excuse me, revive DWN, which has been done, pretty much. Uh, keep on going. Don't be adversely affected by Ubuntu. Have a more often updated stable release. Ice Weasel 3, done. More desktop polish. 
um, different release cycles for server and desktop. Better how-tos for creating packages. Um, PDF editor clone for Total Commander. Backports. Um, support for specific enterprise hardware like LSI cards. Uh, one guy mentioned they need a basic replacement for a basic sound editor for like Cool Edit or SoundForge. Some people wanted a m better minimal Debian. One guy wanted SysV in it. Um, people want better VM support. And some people want world peace. <laughs> um, some people want to remove the need for a local MTA. Um, users want backports to be more official. I'm not sure how. Maybe merge them into FTP master or something somehow. Um, they want the f etch and a half project to become more s to happen for every release. Um, And they want us to support old stable until stable becomes old stable. So Sarge until Lenny. They want us to be able to skip from Sarge to Lenny, that sort of thing. Um, so what are, you, what are the respondents use from outside Debian? DebianMultimedia.org for all those patented codecs. Um, Cinerala, DVD rip, uh, TT, which is a command line time tracker written in Perl, Flock, which is a web browser, the Apache Condor project, um, Plone 3 isn't available in Etch, so they were using it from outside Debian. Mod Security, which is going to be back in Debian soon, I think. Uh, Zed, which is a text editor that was removed back in the Sarge days, I think, because it was abandoned upstream. Webmin, probably shouldn't be using that. Um, AVI, Demux, and Transcode. Okay. So most people didn't mention DebConf at all. Um, or one, one guy is coming to DebConf who's an Argentinian. Uh, Francisco Albani, if you're here, <laughs> you here? Nope. Okay. And one guy was friends with several Debian UK developers and supplies them with beer often. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long have people been using Debian? Um, okay. Uh, 99, 2000, since Potato, um, using SID since 2003, since Slink was released, since Potato was released for about a year, since Sarge, since the days of seven floppies net inst, which was uh, way before my time. <laughs> Five years, two years, ten years, since 1998, uh, since 2002. Most users didn't mention any contributions to Debian, but some did, and they contribute documentation. They sell services built with Debian. They um, run Debian mirrors. They promote Debian. They send patches to Debian. They file bugs. They participate in the forums. They buy CDs from Debian developers. They donate to money, money to Debian. They donate to upstreams. They use a free software friendly ISP, they wear Debian t-shirts and they uh, serve tea to their guests in Debian mugs. <laughs> um, so some barriers to contribution for our users. One guy specifically mentioned um, that we need an analysis and appraisal of what it takes to become a DD in terms of time. Um, that it's not easy to find out how to help. 
Um, one guy wanted better mentorship to being a DD, perhaps something before the NM stage, um, and wanted the, the process to be shorter. So what does Debian mean to people? Quality software, by the people, for the people, the best distro around, stability, it just rocks. I love Debian. Um, okay, some quotes. Never sell out to the blue meanies. Speaking of working, I had better do some. I'm not sure if I've had enough coffee to write properly yet. <laughs> uh, wearing Debian feels ma macho and geeky without getting too slacky. <laughs> uh, freedom from the shackles of the Microsoft monster has never been so sweet. Okay, now the NM survey. Had about 31 emails, 26 people responded. Most of them were NMs, a few less people just before the NM stage. There were a few DMs. Um, there was one recent DBN developer and a couple of application managers. Uh, one of the NMs had abandoned the process after ye one year of waiting for an application manager. Um, several of them are now DDs. Some of the locations mentioned were Tokyo, Austria, Thailand. Um, some of the issues that they mentioned. Firstly, most of these have actually been solved or are in the process of being solved with the addi new additions to DAM and front desk. Okay. Uh, one guy mentioned that the NM process for non-packages, packagers, isn't as clear as it is for, for the majority of applicants. Um, a common issue was lack of the time on the part of the new maintainer. One guy mentioned that Debian, at least IRC, isn't a very welcoming place. Um, common problem is that Debian developers are just often too busy and there are not enough of them. So it's hard to find a sponsor. Um, some people found the process really slow, um, especially at the dam stage and there were no, wasn't any feedback during that time. Um, it, it appeared to me that NMs are generally undervaluing themselves and some of them are not being proactive about their NM process, chasing down the application manager when they haven't replied for a month and that sort of thing. Some people said NM was too bureaucratic. Um, some people found that sponsors aren't up to the task of reviewing specialised packages, so they tend to get dropped on the floor. People worried about the size of the dam queue quite a bit. Apparently AMs occasionally disappear. Um, some people said it was hard to know how long NM will take. A couple of reasons for not joining NM were that at this stage they felt their contributions through sponsorship were the best way to contribute. Um, one guy said he was waiting until he felt ready for it. Okay, some general comments. Uh, NM is a big learning process for most people and they found it really helpful. People like um, like being sponsored because they know their work is reviewed and therefore what gets into Debian is actually good. Some people applied too early. Some people were overjoyed at reading their NM report being posted. Um, some people don't need the, the new DM 
process because they've got re responsive sponsors and they are in uh, packages teams like Debian Pearl or Debian Games. There is a level of pride of being in being part of Debian and having a, a Debian account. Some people said that Debian DM wasn't so useful to them because the low number of con no co maintained non co maintained packages that are uploaded only once or twice. Um, one person said that not all teams are good places to work. One uh, sponsor said that there are many more uploads to sponsor than time and it's hard to prioritise them. So they prioritise by, per by whether they know the, the, sp the person needing sponsoring. Um, one person said that the DM feels like a workaround but still liked it. Um, one of the AMs said that philosophy and procedures checks are a little bit lightweight. Um, I got the impression that the NM quality varies quite a bit between applicant. Um, the AMs both learnt from the process too. Um, Apparently the impact of DM on Debian is as yet unknown. Uh, personally, I, I think that's correct. Um, one guy mentioned that 70% of his uh, NM process was waiting. Apparently the front desk is quick though. Um, and during this waiting, the motivation is generally minimised by good sponsors and support from people around them. Some teams, people are involved in the games team, the Debian Med team, Pearl team. Um, some goals that people had um, to do GNOME 1 porting and removal. Uh, improve Debian with respect to bioinformatics, packaging squirrel mail plugins, regularly fix RC bugs, um, take care of their packages well. Help out with science and math packages, getting NetConf released, working on the herd, um, joining a core team like security or the kernel. Um, some general wish list suggestions. Improve the NM bus factor. Um, I think this has improved since survey. Uh, add lots of practical things to their process. Um, what kind of involvement do these people have in Debian? They um, participate in bug squashing parties, in packaging teams, moving stuff to main, like Alpine, adopting orphan packages, um, defining policy and tool chains for smaller subsystems and areas like uh, the D language or Yorick to reintroduce remove packages. Um, so some of the motivations that people have for contributing to Debian is that they use Debian and they feel the need to give back to the community. One guy said that packaging stuff can be addictive. Um, some people, one guy actually likes to read Flame Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and he also wanted to see how a project can work without continuity and leadership. So the future of the survey, obviously I'll be posting the final summaries to Debian Develop Announce and I'm not sure whether I'll do it again, maybe and if more people are interested then in helping, then I probably would. Um, after that, after next year, I don't think I'd do it again. It's a lot of reading. Um, and I'll probably hand it off to the press team or maybe the DPL would like to take it up. <laughs> okay. Um, and now I'll open it up for discussion.
Any questions, comments? Anyone? I'm not sure if the Debian team knows this, but over the past year, the uh, Caixa Federal Bank in Brazil that runs the lottery system is using Debian in over 17,000 lottery machines and to run their lottery system by bringing the development in-house instead of using a proprietary out-of-house out of uh, system vendor. They were able to reduce the time of inventing a new lottery game from 10 months to three weeks. <laughs> so, they, so they can sucker in more people? Uh, you can talk about anything you want to about using the lotteries and stuff like that, but it also helps to fund their social security system mm. and their educational branch. Okay. But, cool. you know, this is one of the things where I tell people that it's not necessarily the price of the software that makes good software. It's what you can do with it, and it's what the value of the software is. And the value of that particular software to Cache Federal was multiple hundreds of millions of dollars. Of course, it'd be nice if they uh, contributed that to uh, Debian. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. It was very interesting. I mostly agree about the comments you made about the, in the user and enemy survey. This all sounds very true. Um, has there, have you, could you um, say that anything has happened since the survey that people might have noticed there was something wrong they could immediately or e easily fix and that is on the way now or what has already happened? Um, I mentioned etch and a half quite a bit. I mentioned... Um, the possibility of constantly usable testing and the releasing testing. Um, and I mentioned the, the, I think I mentioned the additions to front desk and dam once or twice. Um, can't really think of anything else at the moment. Well, I was, I was thinking of uh, the other way around, points raised by users that we could maybe easily fix now uh, not, not something that was ongoing and appreciated by users. Yeah. Um, to remind myself about what I talked about. There aren't really any that um, are easy or any that I can think of that are easy, that how to, to fix them, uh, yeah. What was this NM bus factor thing you were talking about? Um, that sounded interesting. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, it was basically that at the time there was only one person processing accounts and I think that was Elmo at the time that the survey was carried out. So it was ab about the process, not about people fe feeling like being proud of being in an M, so that's, that would be another bus factor. Okay. Sorry? Yeah. We, we, was it about that people would feel proud about the best factor of being in an M or no. it was the other way around too, of yeah. people doing the process from the back end, okay. Just looking at the current NM figures, it actually looks like there's only about four people waiting for DAM and the huge 
Um, stopping point at the moment is getting an AM assigned. Yeah. So that's actually something it's that issue, Debian right. developers can do. You can sign up, you can be an AM. Um, you, you can help work out that backlog. That's not you know relying on one person. Um, uh, there, there are templates available, and I did it in the past, and I'm thinking I should probably start again, given that's where the problem is. So if you're worried about getting new people in, um, you, you can make a difference. Definitely. Myself. Okay. Um, I don't know if it is correct for uh, this is a special talk, but you, you were saying what people like and what people don't like about Debian. Yeah. And now this is a particular case in my Linux user group down in Bahia Blanca. Uh, since the beginning of Ubuntu and Kubuntu, people started to say, okay, I can get a special CD and install Genome and a special CD and install KD. And when I said, okay, why didn't you, don't you try Debian? Just because I love Debian. Uh, they told me, oh no, because if I choose uh, just uh, the desktop, they will install me both of them, and I don't want both of them. So I said, okay, go to the console. No, why should I have to go to the console? <sighs> that's, that's one, that particular thing is why most of, uh, of them ended up in Ubuntu or in Kubuntu. I uh, just wanted to share it. I don't know if it is the proper place, but well, since you are all here, I guess it's a good, a good time to say it. I am not sure, but I think the installer installs GNOME by default, so you don't get KD along. No idea. I am always insu uh, installing no. using the bootstrap. <laughs> In fact, for uh, well, for users to install Debian, you have three first CDs, each of who, uh, each of whose uh, which has a different desktop environment. So you can install uh, have one CD for installing GNOME, one CD for installing KDE, one in CD for installing X. FSC, or you, you can just scrap, scrap it all and do it by yourself. So, okay, so why doesn't that is being published very with green and flashing lights in the main web page? I guess it should be the, the way, hey, start here. Perhaps that's not the idea. Uh, uh, but uh, that's the contents. Uh, of the first CD, but uh, uh, do they actually get during uh, installation a screen that uh, lets them uh, uh, choose? Uh, I want to, to, to install GNOME. I want to install. No, so, uh, 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 so they don't see that choice. Well, I'm really not into desktop, so I, I have seen that. Uh, I mean, you were asking me, so I, I am answering. But uh, I mean. If you just want to get the Debian default install, that it will be GNOME and forget about it. If you want to get uh, to install a Debian system which uh, has by default a different desktop, then it's also there. Uh, you get the proper CD to do the installation you want, and it's not widely advertised because, well, uh, uh, well, I think I am not into any of those teams. That if you if users don't have to do, to take a choice. It's, it's bothersome to, to present it to them. So just install the default. If users are looking more into, I don't like GNOME, okay, they can go and search for something else. That's it. Uh, wouldn't it be possible to make the choice if you choose desktop environment that there's another question which asks you, I want to use GNOME, I want to use KDE, or something like that, and just leave the default to GNOME? Is, is this a GNOME versus KDE flame war session, <laughs> or is this a talk about the uh, new maintainer uh, process and survey of users? 
So we had, in, in one of the earlier talks today, we were talking, it was actually in, in our DPL's session this morning and the discussion afterwards, um, we're talking about the fact that part of what makes this whole thing work is for each of you who are involved in the project in some way to feel empowered to do something. And so if there is something that bothers you about the way the current installation process works or the choices that are available, go investigate it and propose a specific change, preferably in the form of a source code patch to something along the way. Um, that, that will carry a whole lot more weight than saying, hey, you know, couldn't we do this, couldn't we do that? The answer is, well, yes, we could do many different things, but the people who are currently working on it are, are either satisfied with the way it is now or they have some plans that they will work on when they get to it. If you don't like it, then do something about it. That's how this project works. Yeah, on this particular front, in fact, in, the, in lieu of anybody else with any other points, um, I believe that the, where we've got to today is we want to minimize the number of questions that people have asked during the install. So people, um, given the default, um, either CD number one or DVD number one, will get known by default just because we need to make a choice. It's not necessarily the choice that we... You know that we decide we like no more than KDE. We just we have to make a choice. Um, the there is support already on the on the first DVD for whichever desktop you want. You can specify it, but it's done by a boot command line. Um, there is still plenty of scope for discussion, as Bedell said. Discussion and or changes if people would like the behaviour to change. Anybody else? <laughs> okay, moving on to something else. Um, how many people here are AMs? Hands up. And how many of those have actually active and have, have been through NM with, uh, with, with new maintainers in the last 12 months? Cool. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much to those people. Please can we give them a round of applause? It's, it's one of the best things that people can do to get new people into Debian. <laughs> and if anybody else is interested, please really sign up. It is one of the places where we've got huge amounts of work to do and not enough people. And it's a really high profile job. It's a place where you can get to interact with some really enthusiastic, fresh people who want to do everything they can. The longer we leave people stuck in this queue, this is where they lose their motivation and their enthusiasm. The more we can, we can pick them and steal that enthusiasm, the better. I'd just like to add that it's also a very interesting way to learn about interesting things in the project. Um, because you get into contact with people who are actually doing other things than you are in a very interesting way, um, you get to learn things that you even didn't know existed before. And it's a very, very nice way to learn the project as a Debian developer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, on NM stuff. Firstly, one thing is that lots of people do complain about the length of time they're in NM. But for a big percentage of those, they've also introduced big delays into the system <laughs> themselves. I mean, as an AM, you, it's not at all rare to have three months, six months, a year go by before the applicant actually gets around to answering some questions. And obviously, you can hassle them, but it's, that's up to them if they don't want to do it. Um, the same applicants, though, will kind of justifiably, but will ju kind of justifiably feel annoyed if you then take six months to get back to them whether their question, whether their answer is right or not, and as as the applicant, obviously, you want the you want to get a response back quickly. But equally, 
there is some give and take there. I mean, um, and the other another thing is that although a lot of applicants in principle would like to have a more hands-on, active process of trying out, like building new packages and so on, rather than answering boring questions, that ca when people have tried this, or at least if people try this as a kind of exercise rather than just working on the packages already working on it to ends up generally taking more time and can actually be quite frustrating to work on some some package you're not really interested in or to build artificially some package that's not really going to be used um, whereas I mean if if you actually already know of the Debian system even though answering the questions may be a waste of time if you actually have been working on packaging already probably it won't actually take you very long the people who it takes a long time for are the ones who haven't, who don't actually have the knowledge yet that they will need in the end. Anyway, I should. Uh, so you were talking, wow, that's loud. You were talking about these delays between, uh, between caused by the applicant. So by the way, I'm in NM, and my AM is he, uh, Mark, if he's here. Mark? No. <laughs> Great, yeah, well, no, he's been fine. He has been fine. Um, but anyway, you were talking about these delays, and it's some sometimes it's the applicants, sometimes it's the AMs. Are there any data on the, on the latencies? Like, are we recording these round trip times? Uh, effectively, yes. Uh, anybody who wants who, I guess, has access to the maintainer uh, mailboxes can tell. It's pretty obvious, especially because what usually happens is there's an inactive NM and the main AM sends pings or vice versa. Um, I mean, I've been in both cases depending on what I'm doing, so that's usually how you can tell if you really care. Another thing that you can look at is the last status. Um, if the last status has the fact that the AM has pinged, then, then you know, too, what's going on. Uh, so, uh, so I've been trading mails with Mark for the past six months or something. Um, it's when you say the, if the last status of the AM is pinged, is that recorded in the NM CGIs or? Uh, and I guess I, what I'm really interested in would be if actually these mails were logged and we could just like see, you know, over the past 20 NM applicants, what even just the date headers were logged, date and from, just to get those round trip times to get a sense of who's, who's delaying and how much on which side. You'd put them on a web page anonymized or maybe not and then say, oh, this is, you know, clearly AMs need to, this AM needs to improve his job or yeah, not. The, part of the problem though too is the AMs, I mean, AMs are often overworked because they're usually the people who, we basically take on as many people as we can possibly handle because we know that there's always people waiting. Um, so you can't really use the data to recriminate the AM because, wow. but the most important thing is to try to identify AMs who are not keeping up. But as far as the last status thing, anytime an AM touches any field, well actually anybody touches any field in the database, it automatically updates when it was last touched. And a classic thing, most AMs try to anyway, anytime they send it, it's been a while, uh, back and forth, they'll update the little comment field, which coincidentally updates the status field. So if that's happened, then you know that it's not the AM that's causing the delay. I'd like also to add that, um, well, f figuring out which AMs are inactive is from the job, is our job. So if, um, if there's something going on and your AM isn't replying, just mail from this, that's what we're for. Um, I mean, Every, every AM is, is, a, is a person. People can get busy, can have a problem. That's not a serious issue as long as we deal with it. And um, getting data and, and, and putting that online somewhere and, and somehow incrimin incriminating these people isn't really a good thing to do. Right. I, get, I can appreciate not wanting to incriminate people. Um, I guess even if, and I totally understand that everyone's busy, including me, which is why right now I haven't replied in a month. Um, since I'm here or something, but um, <laughs> anyway, so, but even if you totally anonymize the data and just say for these, for this pair of AM, anonymous AM comma NM, um, if you could show DDs, hey look, the average round trip time between these mails is three months, 
uh, across the board, wouldn't maybe that would encourage more DDs to be AMs. <laughs> okay. I don't think so. It seems that there are now much more effective ways for people to participate kind of before they get all the way through NM with sponsorship and team formation and so on. Has there, has there been any kind of study on how that's changed people's willingness to participate, willingness to engage, just the dynamic of all of this? Um, well, most users didn't mention any of that sort of stuff. The few NMs that, that did said that they're, um, they really enjoyed working in teams because of the support from their fellow developers. Um, yeah, there wasn't much information in the, in the responses because there were so few about teams. It, it seems, seems like a, seems like a really uh, positive, positive thing to keep people engaged. I wonder if there's any indication that it's sort of raising people's motivation levels to stay engaged through the through the NM process. I, I, I can report uh, anecdotally that certainly in a couple of instances I know, um, it has encouraged people to apply to go through the uh, maintainership process, which they have seen around them being applied quite quickly and, and that everything seems to be moving. So yeah, I, I think that it has made a change having the alternative approaches. I think mo nowadays most people are getting their motivation from being part of uh, some packaging or other team. So there's uh, really qu uh, quite some people who are active in some team and then eventually will apply for NM and then have enough experience to be able to go through and uh, have proven to be enthusiastic about it. Yeah, what I also found from the team survey that I did, um, admittedly this is completely anecdotal, I've not done thorough analysis of this, um, that the larger teams with a good number of NMs involved as well as the DDs, those, um, those NMs were all seeming to get through the NM process that much faster. Um, you know, they've got ready sponsors around who are prepared to upload the work for them. They've already got a very good view of how, you know, day-to-day -day Debian packaging is going without necessarily having to work it all out for themselves from scratch. They've got, you know, a large amount of support around. It's probably, it, well, there's no probably about it. For me, it's clearly the best way for people to get into Debian these days. Um, to go with the fact, of course, that, you know, um, the, the teams are... Um, clearly, the you know, the new way that most of our, our packaging is being done, um, everybody wins. Okay, uh, we're running out of time, so <coughs> let's cut it short. If you would like to read some of the stuff that I've written in the survey results and um, ask me any questions, see me afterwards. And uh, thanks for everyone who sent me an email.